Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at primitive reflexes in pediatrics. So here are my resources. Uh, the first one is the pediatric textbook that I'm using. Um, after that you have some science direct articles and then some papers. And lastly you have YouTube videos to demonstrate each of these reflexes. So in babies, you have two the different types of reflexes. You have the primitive reflexes and the postural reflexes. So what's the difference between primitive reflexes and postural reflexes? Primitive reflexes, uh, you're born with it. So once the baby is born, you have primitive reflexes. And then after a while, these primitive reflexes start to disappear. Usually in about four to six, at about four to six months old, and the baby will lose their primitive reflexes and is replaced by postural reflexes. And this is important for the baby to be able to sit and walk independently later on in life. Actually, other than primitive reflexes and postural reflexes, we also have other reflexes known as permanent reflexes. So uh, babies have it, uh, but it doesn't disappear in babies. It persists even in adulthood. You can, can you try and think what these reflexes might be? So these reflexes uh, include the blink reflex, when something goes near your eye or some bright light goes near your eye, you will blink. Uh, in adults, you, has, you still have that. Um, the pupillary reflex, your uh, pupils constrict uh, due to bright light being shown into your eyes. You still have that in adults. Swallowing reflex, you still have that in your, your adults. So, um, but now we'll be focusing on the primitive reflexes. So these are the ones listed in the textbook. Primitive reflexes, you have the moral reflex, the rooting reflex, the grasp reflex, the stepping response, and the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. This is quite a mouthful. Uh, it's also known as ATNR, asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. So first we'll be looking at the moral reflex. So here's a and video demonstrating chest, it. Feel the stimulus of dropping your back a few inches. And that's a good normal response. Okay. Okay. So um moral reflex is a moral reflex. Why is moral reflex? It's the sudden extension of the head. Oh Okay, a sudden extension of the head causes symmetrical extension, then flexion of the arms. So, uh, first you have to know what is the extension of the head. Um, in the neck movements, you have uh, extension, you have flexion. So, extension is when your head move uh, backwards. And flexion is when your move uh, neck move uh, your head bends forwards. When your head bends sideways, is known as lateral flexion. And then, if you turn your head to one side and the other, is known as rotation. You have to know all these terms. So sudden extension of the head, so the head moves backwards, causes symmetrical extension, then flexion of the arms. So extension of the arms is the arms open up wide, and then um, flexion of the arms is when the baby bends at the elbows and um, draws the arms back in. And we'll have a look at it again. And then just get the stimulus of dropping your back a few inches. So you see the extension of the head causes extension of the arms and then flexion of the arms again. And notice that it's symmetrical, it's same on both sides. If it's asymmetrical, something might be wrong. Uh, as we'll see here. So asymmetry may indicate nerve root or plexus injury. So why is it only one side is working and one side is not? Probably the side that is not working, there's an injury to the nerve root or a plexus. Plexus is actually a, ner a network of nerves. So for example, you have the brachial plexus, which may be injured during delivery sometimes. Right. So uh, when does this start? As I mentioned before, uh, these uh, primitive reflexes, they all start at birth. So you, you're born with it. And then it peaks at about two months and disappears by about four to six months. So um, an exaggerated response may indicate severe bilateral cerebral lesion. So why is this? So what are reflexes actually? Reflexes are automatic, uh, involuntary uh, responses. So your involuntary means it's not controlled by your brain. Um, and these reflexes, it actually, the, the, the pathway doesn't go through the brain. 
And the brain actually um, inhibits the reflexes. In adults, right, you notice that um, if you have stroke or you have an upper motor neuron lesion, you have a damage to the brain or the spinal cord, your reflexes, your knee jerk reflex, your jaw jerk reflex, um, your biceps reflex, bicep muscle reflex, all these reflexes will be exacerbated because the brain can no longer inhibit these reflexes. So it's exacerbated. Same goes for children. So if you have severe uh, bilateral cerebral lesions or damage to the brain on both sides severely, uh, you have exaggerated response of the moral reflex. So you have very strong moral reflex. And asymmetry may indicate nerve root, or I've already mentioned this. And if it's pers persistent, so we say it usually they disappear by six months, right? Four to six months. If it's persistent uh, beyond six months, it's associated with cerebral palsy. The next reflex we'll be looking at is the rooting reflex. So here's a demonstration of the rooting reflex. Okay. So when touched near the mouth, the head turns to the stimulus. That's the rooting reflex. And then you can see the baby actually goes and suck the finger as well. So it happens with a suckling reflex. So can anybody tell me what might the function of rooting reflex be? If you thought of um, for breastfeeding, then you are correct. Um, this rooting reflex is to help the baby to um, feed. It's help, to help the baby to get some milk from the mother. So if you put the nipple nearby the face, the, the mouth, right? The baby will turn the face and try and find the nipple and suck on it. So this helps the baby to drink milk early on in life. But I can't seem to find the documentation on when the rooting reflex disappears. I'm not sure why, but one possible reason is that could be that uh, these reflexes, uh, reflex means something that's involuntary, right? So how are you going to differentiate uh, when the baby is doing it involuntarily and when the baby just wants some milk. So you can't really, um, you can't really observe when the reflex disappears because you don't know whether the baby actually wants the milk. Because if you really, if you actually want the milk and then you go for the, uh, you go and find the nipple, it's, um, it's not a reflex anymore. It's a conscious effort. But, um, it's difficult to tell apart. That could be the reason it's not documented when the reflex ends. So the next reflex we'll be looking at is the grasp reflex. So here's the grasp reflex. It's on the foot. Okay, so when an object is placed in the palm or on the sole, as we observed just now, flexion of the fingers or toes occur. Um, same as the other primitive, primitive reflexes, it starts at birth and disappears by about six months of age. age. Um, a weak response represents uh, presents in peripheral nerve involvement. So as we said, the reflexes, it only involves the peripheral nerves, the afferent, uh, afferent nerves, and then the reflex arc, maybe some interneurons, then the efferent nerve. So all these nerves are the peripheral nerves. So weak response might indicate a peripheral nerve involvement, such as injury to the roots, the plexus, or the spinal cord. So this is where the reflex path, pathway passes through. And persistence of the reflex beyond six months is usually present in spastic cerebral palsy. The next reflex we'll be looking at is the stepping response. Let's have a look at it. So when held vertically and the dorsum of the feet, so the flat part of the feet, 
touch a surface. Wait, dorsum. Dorsum of the feet touch a surface. Ventral part and dorsal part. Dorsal should be the upper part of the feet. Well, I'll check on that later. But the way, when the feet touch a surface, a stepping movement occur, as you can see here. So you hold the baby vertically, and the feet touch the floor. There's a stepping movement. It starts at birth, like all other primitive reflexes. Um, however, this appears a bit. Uh, this appears. It disappears a bit earlier. So two to three months. It's more pronounced and lasts to a later age in preterm and low birth weight babies. Um, why is this? Uh, probably in preterm babies and low birth weight babies, their brain takes more time to develop because uh, some of the developmental process that um, is supposed to occur in the womb occurs outside so you might um, might take longer for the brain to develop so after the, the brain uh, develops more you lose these reflexes and the last uh, primitive reflexes we'll be looking at is the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex or ATNR so what is it we we'll have a look it's quite subtle it's quite difficult to spot so, let me observe first. It's actually quite subtle. Um, without the diagram, right? Actually, if you don't really actually go and find it, you might not um, observe it. And you don't have this picture to show you. Um, actually, you might not even know about it. Observe the position of the head and also the position of the arms and legs. So what is this asymmetrical tonic length reflex? So lying supine, with the head turned to one side, limbs of the same side extends, whereas limbs on the opposite side flexes. And this is also known as the fencing position. You can see this a fencer here. So the head turns to the right, the right hand and the right leg extends or straightens, and the other side it flexes in a calm supine lying patient uh, patient in a supine lying infant it uh, like all other reflexes it appears at birth and disappears at uh, four to six months and so this is the asymmetrical so asymmetrical the hands and feet are not this on the same not the same on both sides so it's asymmetrical tonic neck reflex so the neck something to do with the neck okay that's all i have for you thank you i hope you find these videos interesting